It does not matter how good your content is. If your videos look and sound like this, then people are going to click off and you are not going to connect with the audience like you could otherwise. Fortunately, getting the most out of your Canon M50 for your YouTube videos is actually just a matter of a few settings and some inexpensive gear. And today I'm gonna to take you through what has taken me years to learn. And hopefully in the next few minutes, I am going to give it all to you so you don't have to learn it the hard way like I did. And the first thing we need and the simplest thing, which doesn't need too much discussion, is a tripod. I personally like Manfrotto tripods. I'll link the one in the description down below that I use. And I also have a very good low price budget tripod that I've used for this channel at times. And I will link that one in the description below as well. So if you are on a budget, just get the budget tripod. Don't think twice about it. And now we've got a stable base for our Canon M50. The two biggest things to getting the best quality out of this camera are not the settings and the lens like you probably think. They're actually the microphone and the audio setup and the lighting. And if you go look at any Hollywood production or any professional video production, what you will find is there is so much lighting and microphone and audio gear around the place. Even when they're sit of shooting in the middle of the day in broad daylight, you will see giant reflectors and shade umbrellas and lights. Getting good quality lighting is absolutely the most important thing to how your video looks. And it's actually significantly more important than your camera lens and setting. The other thing that is extremely important and potentially the most important thing is the audio quality. And all we have to do is look at podcasts. Podcasts where there is no visual at all and they focus on getting the best quality audio have the longest audience duration. People will sit and listen to a podcast for hours on end. And fortunately, getting the best quality out of your audio is not that hard. And this whole video is going to be shot with a 4995 microphone. But I think for beginning YouTubers, this is an extremely high quality microphone at this price point and used correctly, you can get audio that is good enough for your channel to be right up there with channels that have hundreds and thousands of subscribers and millions of views. The key to getting the good quality audio isn't necessarily buying the most expensive microphone. It is the placement of the microphone. And in my case, what I have done is I have taken this microphone and I have put it on an inexpensive boom stand with a boom arm and I have boomed the microphone just out of shot over my head and I have an inexpensive cable that I bought on Amazon that is just running into the camera. So this entire audio setup is well under $100 and the difference between this and using the audio straight out of camera are night and day. And this is just a camera in automatic mode with none of the settings tweaked, no microphone, no lighting, all the things that I have learned over the past three years. And one of the biggest issues I see with people and their audio on YouTube is they buy these on-camera microphones and even with a two or $300 microphone on the camera and being so much farther away from my mouth, the audio source, that is not going to sound nearly as good as this much less expensive microphone boomed right overhead, extremely close to my mouth. And in addition to the microphone, where possible you should try to sound treat the room that you're in. Now, this doesn't mean making it a perfect sound booth and having sound blankets on the walls everywhere, but it does mean bringing in some pillows, spare pillows. Here, I've just got a cheap $10 blanket from Kmart on the wall here. I have some sort of curtains hanging around. I've got spare pillows where I've just stuffed them in corners throughout the room. And I also have a whole lot of stuff in this room, all my audio and video gear. And sort of the more surfaces and things you have in the room, the more it will cut down on that reverb. Now, mind you, I know it is not perfect and that is okay. Getting the microphone as close to your mouth as possible helps kind of cut away some of that reverb and echo that you get from the room. The close proximity to the mic also creates a situation where my voice and the signal from my voice is much stronger in comparison to the background noises, whether it be people in the house making noise or doing dishes or traffic in the city. And that is going to give me a lot less background noise. So that microphone placement is absolutely key. Now, when it comes to the lighting, you can spend a lot 
lot of money on lighting. Adding the lighting to my videos is one of the biggest things I did to improve the quality of my videos. And prior to having my lights and my audio fixed, my average video maybe got 50 or 100 views and now I have some videos over across multiple channels and I have one that's approaching a million views now. On this channel I regularly get videos that go 30, 40, 50,000 views and keep going and prior to implementing my lighting and audio that never ever would have happened. I started out with a $50 video light and actually that's what I'm still using to this day. Even though the channel is is now generating income where I could afford to invest a little bit more in lighting, I, I found that it isn't necessary and this little unit that I've got does an absolutely fine job. I also have a little light that just sits behind me on a small, small mini tripod that is lighting up the wall behind me. And as you can see, that sort of offsets me from the background. You can see where my black shirt ends and the sort of light around me on the back wall sort of gives me some separation. And just to keep things from looking too monolithic and sort of one color, I have a little lamp over here which just has sort of a very warm white bulb and that lamp is one that I actually got out of somebody's garbage and rewired a plug on and then just for a little bit more interest I've added some little fairy or Christmas style light just run off a little double a battery that are sitting there also part of the light of my scene is actually my monitors they sort of light up and they add a little bit of interest on the side here and I do have a little light that I sometimes turn on that just sits here on the desk and that may or may not be on. The important thing is none of this costed very much money. This is a $50 light here. I think the one on the floor was about $25. The light here, what they call a practical light, just to add interest, I got out of somebody's garbage. The little fairy lights cost $6. And this little light, uh, even though I don't always turn it on, I think that might have been 20 bucks or something like that. So you can light your whole scene under $100 and have a, a very good look and certainly much better than using window light or room light. The other thing that you definitely want to do is block out all other sources of light and you want to turn off your main normal overhead light. So I've got a light right up here overhead which is a normal working light that a room would have. But that light is coming down at such an angle which it creates a very unflattering shadow on my face where the light in front of me is very close to me and in fact I'm touching it right now that is how close it is to me you want to get that light as close as possible and the closer the light is the bigger the light source becomes in relation to the subject which is my face and the more flattering it is on the subject being me now that's the lighting and sound and I can't stress how important this is your lighting and sound is the foundation of your video if you do do not get your lighting and sound right. The rest of this will not matter. Your camera settings, your lens, your content and information will be almost completely irrelevant if you do not nail your lighting and sound. And if you ask any Hollywood producer, you can have control of your lighting and sound but have no choice of camera and lens, or you can have your choice of camera and lens and no control over your lighting and sound, every single one of them is going to take take lighting and sound. It is the most important thing in video production. But we've nailed our lighting and sound and now let's talk about lenses. And actually, lenses are probably the most expensive part of this equation and in reality it's one of the least important parts of the equation and if all you've got is the kit lens and right now all you can afford is the kit lens then start making videos with the kit lens and in a previous video I did a blind test comparison between a number of lenses that people use for YouTube while the most popular lens the one that was most picked is the one that I'm using right now which is my number one recommendation for YouTube videos like this, one of the top picks was actually the kit lens. So I don't think you sacrifice that much by sticking with the kit lens, and certainly this is not going to restrict your ability to get viewers or portray your message if you don't have a budget to upgrade your kit lens. But if you do have a little bit of extra money, then my number one recommendation is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. And I did see a good 
price on this on Amazon the other day, and I will link that in the description down below. And what this lens does that the kit lens doesn't is essentially give you an ability to get somewhat of a blurry background where your subject is clear and detailed and in focus and your background is somewhat out of focus. And really, essentially, that is the biggest advantage. Maybe the image is a little bit sharper, a little bit clearer, a little bit more detailed, but not on any level that I would think is overly relevant. It also, because it has a wider aperture, which means the opening that lets light in can get bigger, it will perform much better in low light conditions. So if you are shooting a lot of low light video where you're getting some grainy footage, that's where that Sigma 16 millimeter with its big wide opening is really going to give you a better quality video. The other lens I would consider and I do use for a number of my YouTube videos is the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8. Now, this is an EFS lens, which means it needs an adapter to work on the camera, but it does give you the range from 18 to 55. The ability for it to blur out the background or let in as much light isn't quite as good as the 16 millimeter f1.4, but you have that flexibility of going from 18 millimeters to 35 millimeters. This is also widely considered one of the best zoom lenses ever made. It is a sharper lens than the Sigma 16 millimeter, and it's actually been used to shoot award-winning Hollywood documentaries and films. It really is an incredible lens for the price. It is also quite a big lens though. So if you like the M50 and its small size and its portability, this big lens kind of takes away from that. If you do want a more do-it-all lens, you're not concerned about the portability, then I would go with the Sigma 18 to 35. If you are worried about portability, if you want maximum low light, and you're not worried about that flexibility that the zoom lens gives you, then I would go with the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4. Now, when it comes to the camera settings, first I'm gonna talk about color. There's a lot of people out there when they get into YouTube they think they need to do something called color grading. Now, if you've been looking at shooting log footage or color grading, then I wanna tell you right now, just put that completely out of your mind for the purposes of videos like this. You are wasting your time and you are likely going to get a worse quality picture in the end. Color grading is a very specialized thing and even in Hollywood, there are people out there that the only job they do is color grading. That's how hard and challenging doing a good color grade is. And if you have your lighting and everything set up properly, you should be able to just pick a picture style in camera that suits what you like and straight out of camera, you will get footage that is plenty good enough for YouTube and better than 99% of what's out there. And in my case, I mainly use the neutral picture profile. I like that. I've gone through and tested a few and that's the one I've settled on. The other one that I think is very good is the standard picture profile. And I will tell you that there is a channel that I've watched for some time. His name's Tom Buck. He has some really, really great content and I always loved the way his videos look. And then finally one day he published a video on how he produces his videos and what sort of settings he used in camera. And after really wondering and almost trying to replicate his look at times, wondering what sort of color grading process he went through, he eventually disclosed that he just used the Canon in the standard picture profile and that's the way it looks. So the R does have C-Log, which is very flat and great for color grading. My sort of dirty secret shame is that I actually just use the automatic picture style. And the reason for that is because that's one of the reasons I like Canon cameras is because the colors straight out of the camera look great. And it really just showed that probably most people out there are doing all kinds of things to edit the quality and color on their images from their Canon cameras and they're actually making it worse. So I would suggest look at the standard picture profile or the neutral and those are my two favorite picture profiles. The next thing we need to do is talk about frame rate and this is could be the subject of an entirely separate video but right now I'm just gonna tell you put it in PAL mode and shoot in 25 frames per second. It's a whole different video to explain why, but just do it. 
this is the best setting. Put it in PAL mode for video region and shoot in 25 frames per second. Then we want to switch the camera into manual video mode, not automatic, but manual video mode. And that is going to allow us to set our shutter speed, aperture, and ISO manually. The reason we're doing this is because the scene that we're in right now doesn't need to change. The lighting is static, I'm static, everything stays the same. But if we leave the camera in automatic, it will start thinking, oh, maybe I need to adjust this, maybe he's moved, maybe something has popped up, and you will get this fluctuation that you wouldn't notice if you're walking around and the camera's doing that. But when we've got a static situation like this, what you'll see is the background will be changing color and getting darker and lighter, and it's really distracting and it just doesn't look very good at all. So we want to lock in the settings exactly the way we want them to look, and then we know the camera is just gonna remain recording just like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is set our shutter speed. We are gonna set that at one over 50, and we are going to set our aperture at, in this case, if we're on the 16 millimeter Sigma, we're gonna set that at f1.4. If we are on the kit lens, I want you to zoom out to 15 or 16 millimeters, and we're gonna set that at f3.5. And then all we're gonna do with the ISO is we're gonna set that at whatever we need to, to get our little exposure meter, which is the thing that goes across the bottom of the screen that says three, two, one, and then there's a little white block, and then one, two, three. We are gonna just use that ISO and slide that up and down until we get that exposure meter just centered in the middle on the little white block in the middle. That's gonna tell us that the camera thinks that we are exposing the image properly. And the reason we're setting the shutter speed at the lowest number we can, which on the kit lens is 3.5 and on the Sigma 16 millimeters f1.4, is that's going to give us the most blurry background we can. It's also going to let in the most light we possibly can to get the best quality image. The other thing that's absolutely critical is getting your white balance right. And we want to do that manually. And the way that I suggest you do that with your main light that you've got here, it will have a light bulb in it. And what you want to do is look at that light bulb and see if it has a Kelvin value on the bulb somewhere. It'll say 4000K, uh, 6500K, 5600K, something like that. It will have a number followed by K. That is the Kelvin temperature of the light bulb you're using. Now this, uh, once again, this could be a whole nother video, but what you need to know is the color of the light coming out of your light bulb is going to affect your skin tone and the way all the colors around you and in the room look. So what you wanna do is you want to find out what number is on that bulb, and then you want to go into your camera and go into the white balance, find the Kelvin value, and set the Kelvin value in your camera's white balance manually to match the Kelvin value of the light bulb that you're using. And once you've done this, you wanna shoot some footage and then have a look at it. And particularly look at your skin tone and decide, do you want to cool that down? Do you want your skin tones to look a little less rosy and tan? Or do you want to warm that up? And do you want to add a little bit more color and warmth to your skin tone. If you feel like you wanna go one way or the other, you just slide the Kelvin meter, you slide it up to warm up the skin tone. So if you're at 4,000 and you wanna warm up your skin a little bit, make it a little bit more rosy or tan, go 4,100, 4,200 and check those out. If you wanna cool it down, you think you're looking a little bit too orange or a little bit too tan, then you might go 3,800, 3,900 down from there. But you wanna play with that. And since you're gonna have the same light and the same setup like this, all the time. Once you've dialed it in and you've worked out what color you're happy with, you will just stick with that. And in my case, my bulb is 4,000, but I found that I like 4,200 Kelvin the best for my videos. I think it looks the best on my skin. The other bit of equipment I highly recommend if you are making YouTube videos is a battery eliminator. And all this is is a little battery that goes up in your camera and allows you to run a, a cable from your camera to a power bank like this. And in this video, everything you've seen, I haven't actually had a real battery like a normal Canon battery in the camera. Everything's been powered by one of these little power banks. And what that means is you can basically film all day and you never have to worry about your battery dying. And this is pretty important because on the Canon M50, the batteries go from full charge and they show like they're charged and all of a sudden you're one bar, two bar, and the thing's gone. So you might be on a roll, 
really getting your story going, the battery dies, you lose your mojo, and you either have to put a new one in or maybe you don't have any ready to charge. So, and this is a really inexpensive item, so I really recommend if you're serious about making YouTube videos to pick up one of these as well. And of course that, like all the other gear we have discussed today, will be linked in the description down below. If you're interested in using your Canon M50 to succeed on YouTube, just check out the playlist that's on screen now. I go over everything in detail that we've covered in this video today, as well as all the tips and tricks I've learned over the past few years.